What are we looking at today, Centro? Okay, so slight, I guess, slight update. I've been feeling since our last review more confident in my ability to like improve on my own, if that makes any sense. You yeah. know, like, yeah. I, like I'm more confident going into reviews that I'm going to be able to spot like actually what's going wrong. Okay. Uh, which I'm happy about. Um, but this game, the reason I bring up this game is because I was very confused because everything felt like, like, okay, my, my understanding of this game going into it, right? I, uh, Galio obviously wants to like shove and move, right? That's his, his whole identity. And I want to deny that. And being Talia, I also have the same identity, right? So my idea is like match wave clear and, and try to deny his realm as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I figured, like, I, I was pretty flexible as to where I wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. I, I think I have good synergy with um, Udyr, right? Um, but looking at their comp, I was very happy if I was, like, at two items. And I felt like I was just going to 1v9 the game, right? Um, so that, that was kind of my idea. And it felt like things went so well early, and then there was, like, some threat assessment issues, and then things fell apart so quickly. And I noticed that when, when things fall apart and aren't going according to plan, I find it way more difficult to, like, use my lull states to make a plan mm, because mm. the plans aren't so simple, you know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, okay. And then, and then I think I make bad decisions based off, like, or, like, bad decisions because, you know, I, I just can't, like, figure out how to get back into, right. into the game, so. I'm surprised you end up using your Empowered Q on the minion instead of the Galio here. I feel like you could have just sacrificed that just to trade on the... I feel like he chatted you out, like... I feel like here yeah, you probably even could have just casted this your Q onto him and just ordered him down. Yeah, I think so. I think I think I could be using my powered Qs like more more valuable to like put them on on him. Okay. There's Graves going for a very early gank. Yeah, if I popped Ghost earlier, like as soon as the Galio did. I, I think I could have just escaped with the ghost only, maybe? I think maybe. you probably could have... Yeah, I think you could have maybe even ran down. Yeah, I think I should have. I think I just panicked as soon as, like, he just popped mm -hmm. ghost and ran at me. Because uh, I wasn't expecting Graves Yeah, this is... outside. Like, my entire idea was, like, okay, he's just definitely going to full clear. And I have right. the ward on wrap, so I can right. really just focus on that. Yeah, I would say this is something to keep in mind. When you're versing champions, like, you remember, like, I think... I think, like, Liss and Galio sometimes even tf these champions kind of like break the rules of physics in a way you know like like what you think is possible from a jungler is just amplified by like two times purely because they've got immense amount of gang set up so yeah what i would recommend like just mentally in the loading screen if you're versing one of these champions and you're not taking cleanse any champion that is like a mediocre average early ganker immediately turns into something that has genuine kill threat so you would think of something like for example, um, let's say Diana. Like you wouldn't automatic, you wouldn't assume that Diana has mass amount of kill threat at level three, but she can with one of these champions. Likewise with Graves. Likewise with Kindred. Likewise with many many other champions. So that's just somebody that, like it's just a tidbit that's probably important for you moving forward. Yeah, I did want to ask like when I was going in the game, like I felt like almost the right decision was to bring cleanse, and. It's just like, but they had like so much DC, right? Yeah, they have Galio, Anamumu, and Varus ult. So it's like, how much can cleanse really help me? Uh, I actually think Ghost is also really important in this game. Like I think into their comp, Ghost is really nice just to kite out. So I think what yeah. I would do is I would just take Ghost as well. And then I would simply just get a Mercs. Okay. But to be honest, I almost feel like if you're getting CC, you're dead anyway. Like, yeah, that's, exactly. how, that's kind of how I feel this game. Like, I feel like you're gonna die anyway. Like, you think about it. If you're if a Mumu's QRing you, you're fucking dead. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no way Clun saves me there. Yeah, I mean, maybe the outlier is Varus, like a Varus R, but you shouldn't really probably be in that situation anyway. Yeah, I mean, I have Volley Bear and Udyr to yeah, like, soak that exactly. for me. So exactly. Okay. So I, I wouldn't even blame you if you didn't even go Mercs this game. I think you can get away with it. So nice little base here on a cannon. To be honest, man, when I look at topside matchup, that's not where I would want to direct my attention for me personally. Like for me personally, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, uh, Volibear is good in regards to like the CC and it is a heavy trading melee versus melee matchup. But I don't know, man, like I see this. I think this is much spicier. Um, and especially now that he's died early. Ugh. 
Look, I'll still keep an open yeah. mind. I would. I definitely would. Like, I wouldn't write it off yet. But my, you know, I would just be slightly weighing that that bot side more from now on. Sure, I think so. I, I, I think I was, like, slightly influenced by... This is the third game on my, my block, mm. and the second game, this guy absolutely destroyed me. Like, it was a mon... Like, when 1v9, like, everyone. Oh, and so who? I was just like, who? okay... Who? Like the volley bear, the volley bear. Right, right, right. Okay. And so I was just like, okay, well, if this guy's fed, then, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, I, you'll you'll notice I didn't even spend a lot of time going topside because my jungler had a hard focus towards bot anyway, so, I, I just followed that suit. Okay, this guy still hasn't reset yet, and he doesn't have TP, so I think we shove D at the cannon here. Lovely. Looks like something's happening bot side. I think this is a great R window bot. Yeah, Huge. I was definitely looking. Wait, I'm so surprised you don't go there. I just, it seemed way too low percentage with Graves yep. and like oh, yep. being full HP and red buff. Mm. I, I honestly think he should have ghosted an odd. Like, way earlier. Like, I, I don't think you should hold Ghost here. I think you should Ghost now. Right, just to get in the range. Yeah, that's right. You should use Ghost now, and then... Varus is so vulnerable here in this situation, and I'm pretty sure he flashed aggressively here. Yeah, he actually flashed aggressively already. So he has no flash, no heal. It's just a Ghost R angle. You'll get the kill from the Varus, and then you just run out. He can't. They can't kill you. Yeah, okay. I think mean, mean, it's a bit too conservative, personally. Wait, this guy not reset again. Okay. Top dies. We've got a little bit of room. I think we base for the lost chapter. Excellent. Okay, so, like I said, bots where the action's gonna be. Now, we've got to be very careful. I like the pings. We did try to make it as clear as we possibly could, but they ignored you. Not much we can do about that. Yeah. I think I think they even thought it was worth, like, just to kill the Varus on the, on the wave crash, right. so... Well, you did get the Galio uh, out, which is great. Yep, that's fine. I don't blame you for not going for that one. That was that's fine. Yep, but I figure right now, right, like Galio's no R. Yep. I have R and Bosom, so this is yep. definitely like as soon as my balling back on map, I want to make something happen. A little bit unfortunate there. It looks like Varus going mid caught you off guard. Yeah. I think... Like, I wasn't, like, very much paying attention to where the Galio was either. Like, after he... After the bot play. I think I could have maybe known that he was going to be closer and took a safer path, but... Okay. Lovely. Well done. Nice little dragon. Excellent. So we're in a, like you personally, you're in a good spot here. I mean, you're yeah, I was really super well. happy. Like, got... This is where like I was just like this is like a perfect scenario for me. Like, yep. All I all I care about right now is just like keep shoving. Um, I still have R available if yep. like a play goes down, and then like once I get to my to my first item plus boots, I I should just be tearing apart the game. Yeah. I think you just should be hovering in between the waves on bot side. Like, I don't like how you're walking back here. Like, I think your default right. response should just be... Because we this is the, where the action is going to be. Right? This is where you need to be directing your attention. So for me, personally, I'd be automatically hovering in. Just starting my recall down here if you want to recall. If not, just, just hover in between the waves down there. Yeah. So there yeah, it I'm is. Not sure why. I guess it's just like... It's almost like I'm shoving and then realizing I should go by even though well I think the, the, obvious, the big yeah. difference between me and your arena of the game I see I see this when, when you press tab I see um that's not spamming tab there yeah anyway but I, I see a Mumu and Rakan like very all in you know very spicy gank setup oriented champions and then varus automatically means chaos anyway right just with the kit right it's a very lane bully centric uh uh pick and it has no mobility right so i said no mobility all in support with the amumu that has to go all in otherwise they're slowly gonna lose 
Um, I just think that's like such a volatile bot lane. So I think the difference with me and you is that you, you are realizing it, but it's not, it's almost kind of like in reaction to what they're doing where I would have been like kind of more anticipating it. Like that's why right. my, that's so you're why ready I, as soon as it happens. Like, like I would be already panning my camera in between each wave. Like I'd be already moving and panning, right? Like mm-hmm. after I get this wave, I'm already moving and panning because like I'm imagining as if I'm Vex, I'm 110% like just sitting here and panning in my camera on the way through just because the nature of the trading pad is look what you see you look on the minimap here right you pan you move but look what the mmo does he goes in mm-hmm. that's what i would but you gotta but th- that's not that's not luck right that's just like that's the way it's gonna play out like it's highly likely yeah. that that's the way it's gonna play out so i think that's like right. the only nitpick i like but i think that comes down to more just knowledge and of visualizing that matchup. Yeah, and that, now that I think about, I mean, in that specific scenario, I think I was like actually just looking for a Fiendish codec space because I was getting right. below half mana, right. and I was like at that nine hundred, and I think that's why I, I backstepped. But I think honestly, just you're right though in saying I could just be channeling my base like in the like river instead, right? And then that that play happens, and I'm already ready. Okay. So this is another one. So let's take a look at this one. So Udia ends up... I mean, we know for after this, we really want a base, right? Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I actually think you should have even recalled right here. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think I just worried about the wave for some reason. Like, figured I could just grab it really quick and then take the base, but there's no point, I don't think. Yeah, I think just... Because by the time he takes all the way to go mid, reset. But we also know that Udia decides to go for a uh, an invade, right? Now, as soon as we see that invade, we should have instantly been panning our camera just to kind of get an update. At this point, we know it's fucked, right? Like, we know at yeah. this point, there's nothing we can do to save the UDR. That guy's dead, right? So what, what should we do mm-hmm. right now? Just base, yep. straight base. Instantly base. Yep, just overcompensation, I guess, maybe. Or I guess a bit of a compensation, just trying that's, to look for something to get, yep. you know, from it that doesn't exist. That's the that's the definition there of compensation. And not only does it get you killed, you end up having to blow flash. So what I'm noticing right now, the the like this entire sequence of events, this matters a lot. Right? It's the little details. It's the instantly hovering bot side. Because you should be ba- if even if you're wanting to base, you should be basing on bot side anyway, mm-hmm. right? So it's the it's it's where it's where you're basing it, where you're moving in between the waves. It's the anticipation. It's the insta resets here. It's the tempo. It's the saying no to plays. It's the little details here, just that really tighten the edges. Like your the 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 found like the fundamental fundamental approach to the game in your mindset is correct. It's just tightening the edges now. Mm-hmm. But same thing, honestly, right? Now it's just, again, classic mid to bot. Same thing. Yep. Good. No hesitation. Hover. I like it. Oh, uh, I I get so annoyed at this. Oh, when I, you tried to... Oh, I see what yeah, you mean. You clicked on the click minimap, right? When it goes on the minimap, yeah. Oh, oh I see what so you mean. annoying. I get so annoyed at that. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. They, they take... They get some kills. Galio goes bot. I'm assuming Galio odd. Did he odd? Yeah, I think he odd. Yeah, Galio odd. Yeah. Uh, this one's a very interesting one. I I would. I don't think I would be like um trying to like move bot here if. Graves didn't have Herald available, but I think I was just worried about them, like, actually just full committing for, like, the Herald push, and I think if they did, like, they might have made a misplay, and I could collapse Mm, on that. Fair enough. Okay. I could say that. I mean, look, at at the end of the day, you know the the mindset of your opponents better than me, because I don't play in this rank on this server. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me personally, if this were my game, I would have just went mid and got plates. But uh, I, I can see what you're thinking, so I don't I don't mind it too much. Okay. Mm. 
and there's that threat assessment that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm just like, and I, I think it was because um I don't know when I was looking bot right I thought mm. I saw like Graves dip, like into their try right. Right. And go back to. And like, so I expected him just. Yeah, I just expected him to go to Krugs, and so I mm. thought I was in no threat. And... Yeah. yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, look, because uh, this looks exactly like the sort of mistake I would make as well, because I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, look, these are one of those just really shitty deaths. It's just what it is. It's a shitty death. They feel shit. They are shit. And they ruin the game. And they're just so... Under these, these are one of my least favorite deaths. It's just so shit. Um... <laughs> For me, when I look at this, the, I would say, um, I think there's two things that you didn't really factor in. I think the first, okay, there's a, there's a few. I think we've got to realize that number one, we have no sums. Number two, um, you've got no tier two boosts. You're actually quite slow. Number three, gr Graves with the uh, EW from the looks of it. Like that, I mean, look... You probably think of Graves as like so bad into you, and it is most of the time. Um, mm. But I think it just goes to show if you're this deep in the lane and you're not leaning properly, Graves E W with red buff is enough just to just to get on top of you. He has the tier two boot. I'm assuming over you. He has the red buff. He has the W slow. Um, it's just a lot of specific information. So to me, the way I would view this is oh, all right. I got caught off guard. I had a hypothesis. It was wrong. I think regardless, you should have been hovering topside. Um, it, it is what it is. I wouldn't overemphasize it. It's just shitty, but it, it just shows that maybe there's a little bit of lack of threat assessment there with that Graves. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. That makes sense. Okay. And now the game is quite hard. This is where the game is 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 really quite tricky. I mean, I think at this point, as soon as you die here, uh, I think that and bot dies here, and they lose that bot tower, your your mindset now is going to okay. I must stall this game out and get to some items, right? Yeah, is yeah. That your I mean, mindset? it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, it feels like difficult to transition. I think this is maybe that's my problem, right? Where. Like, I was, like, so confident in, in the early game, right? Because yeah. plays just, like, were going so well. Yeah. And then instantly just falls apart like this. And so I'm this just, is like, where you fall apart here. Because you're talking about this is, yeah. Where you, yeah, this is where you struggle. It's just, like, I had this, like, idea of how this game is playing out now. And it, it just shifts so instantly, you know? Right. And I think that I wasn't, like, really prepared for it, I guess. And Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Like, I think that, like, I just need to realize that, you know, like, okay, like, things... Like, didn't go as planned. Like, right now, like, go back to my original plan. Like, I, I was always happy with hitting, like, two items and then just tearing apart the game from there. So, I think I just have okay. to realize that. I want like, to frame in a, it in a different way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. How do I frame this? Okay. Would you agree that everything up until this, like, like, here, all this, it's almost just, like, the ball's in our court. It almost feels like we're the one controlling the game in a way. Like, we're... I would say we're less so reacting, more so choosing what happens. Like, would you yeah, agree with that? I would agree. I would agree, yeah. Like, looking at this, like, I, I know this feeling. It feels like, okay, I'm in control. I get wave control. I, you know, I get good vision. You know, I'm farming well. It almost feels like everything is kind of going by the book here. And it almost feels like after this play, especially when you die and bot dies as well, the ball's not in your court anymore, is it? Because the enemy comp has just got stronger skirmishing right now. Like, they have more control. Um, you know, you guys need more time to spike. It's like it's like their turn. Like, I look at, the, I look at all these champs right now, and I look at this, and I'm thinking, fuck me. Like, they're just so much stronger, right? Mm -hmm. Like, not even yeah. close. So, so the way I view it is like the ball's in their court. So there's two mindset shifts that you've got to make. The first one is that um, you need to bring it back to your key spike. That's what I always do. When I, when I get punched in the face, my first thing is, okay, when, when do I spike next? When am I strong? And what is my role? They're like, the, I guess, the two things I think about. And when I think of this, I'm thinking, well, look, I need time. 
I need time. I've only got my one item. I need more time. Um, I'm going to stall out this game a little bit. The second thing is I shift my mindset from being more proactive to more reactive. But I'm choosing to be reactive. So, like, that doesn't mean I don't make plays, but it means I'm more willing to, to kind of just relax, farm up, and capitalize on mistakes. So I'm in the capitalize on mistakes mindset right now. I'm waiting for them to slip up. I'm waiting for them to overstay. I'm waiting for them to to overcommit to a dive or whatever it might be. So now, given I'm in the reactive state of mind, I'm thinking, okay, how can I scavenge farm? What objectives can I trade off? For me, 110% give drag. Give drag. Use the tempo that you're going to get from them or saying bot side to shove and go top side to take camps or take their raptors. Get other shit done. I mean, I'm in a reactive scavenger mindset. And so here, if I see, you know, Ida, Ida on top side, I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm just going to trade sides of the map. There's no way in a million years we should be contesting Dragon here. Yeah, for sure. Right? So, shove, hover, protect the Uria. They're trading sides of the map anyway. And then it may be, it may be, and like, you would have been here. You should have been here. There's no way Maud can, should be able to contest that. You should have been there. Yeah, yeah, like 100%. 100% There's yeah. no way Galio should get this fight first. But that's a mistake on their half. There's no way Mordekaiser should be doing that, you know? And this is another a classic example of a mistake that they just get away with that they shouldn't have got away with. I mean, you're even lucky there that Galio dies. Galio shouldn't even, I mean, Volibe had to blow Flash. But that, again, that sequence of events is massive. But it comes from the wrong mindset. Like, you've just, just listened to this Rakan without thinking for yourself. Because you got punched in the face. Does that, does that make sense in the mindset though? The mindset shift? Yeah, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. And yeah, 100%, like I'm, I was not thinking about that in the game. My, 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 my thought process, I think I just panic and then I'm just like, okay, like how do I, how do I make the play that's, that's like winning for me, you know? Like, right. Like, it's how do not I get, about that. It's not, yeah, it's not about that. It's not about that. Like yeah. some, you got to accept, and this is what Nathan spoke to me about, like, he talks about how the really good players, when they when they make a mistake or if they feel like there's nothing they can do, they just keep doing their job until the enemy fuck up. And if you do that well and you farm well, a lot of the time you're gonna have another opportunity. Cause the enemy's not gonna yeah. play they're not gonna play perfectly. I mean, if they do, they do, right? And then it's like, all right, you win. <laughs> it's like it is what it is. <laughs> but you gotta be willing to just be like, okay, um, all right, I'm, I'm going to accept that, like, if I just got to be conservative and, and if, if I play conservative and you guys play perfectly, then that's it. You deserve the win, right? Yeah, for sure. But, but definitely, I, like, to, to know there's not, like, to know, or to think that there's not going to be a mistake, you know. There's going to be a mistake. That's right. Yeah, for sure. Right, it's a really good play. You guys do a beautiful uh, bush camp. Ends up working out really well. Hunt, you get the shutdown on the graves. You're doing a boatload of damage. I mean, look, personally, this is not the play I would have made, but I respect the play. Like, for me personally, I would have been um, saying no to drag and just trading sides of the map. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I would have pinged back, 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 and then and then it, actually what I would have done is ping Ezreal mid, and then I go top, and then I ping assistance over here, and then Volibear go bot. And then give drag. That's what I would have done. Yeah, just just play for like the the top CS, the top tower. Yep, that's right. I want gold. Nice and conservative. Uh huh. But you end up getting a shutdown, but it does cost three deaths. So I, I don't even know if that's really worth it, to be honest. No, I don't think so. By the end of it. Like I think we do have definitely like a like a really good bush camp, obviously mm. with with the Talia and the Rakan, but. It's only that at this point they're way too strong that they it's fight back. After. Yeah, you're just fighting in their spike, you know. Yep. And that's also something I, I don't think I, I thought about before the game was like the Galio and the Greys like have a really good mid game spike yeah. compared to uh Talia, Udir, Ezreal, you know. Like I don't even so. know why you guys are fighting this, I'll be honest. Like I I I, I don't even know. If this is... I just don't... Why? Like, like, why not just, like, ping back on Rift and call hover? Yeah, I mean... 
Like, it, yeah, it seems like the better play, right? Like, it's just... Like, why are we fighting into a Galio, Graves, and Moomoo? Like, look at that comp right now. Yeah, it's so deadly. It's so deadly. So f like, look at this and this. I mean, I mean, look, Ezreal's not weak, and Rakan's not weak, but just, like, this versus this right now is just not, not even close. Personally, but I mean, look, that's just my opinion. Again, you've got to come up with your own hypothesis in these situations. So, and yeah, I mean, I, th I think, not you know, optimally, it, it makes sense that I would just trade the farm and, and call for a hover bot. I personally feel like maybe, yeah, it's a, it's a bit hard to say in game, like with how things were like going. Like, I, like I'm just trying to read the body language of my team too, and it, like, it feels like I'm getting pulled there, right? So, I don't know. It's tough to say no, but well, I totally get where you're coming the, from. The way I view it, and I want to bring it back to Cupcake's ace mentality, right? So, when you're coming out of... When you're in this situation, let's bring it back to ace, right? Acknowledge the best play, right? So, you got to identify the best play. Now, the best play, right? I mean, look, it's hard... You know, this might be where you struggle. I don't know, right? But in hindsight, the best play is, in my opinion, go bot, call, hover, give rift. Um, communicate it. Right? Communicate the best play. Ping assistance, ping back, give rift, hover me. And then and then if they if you ping and then they ping back back and they ping on my way there and Udis starts walking up, then you embrace reality. And mm. then you go. Yeah, definitely. That's I mean, the, that's I think the you're right that I that I did struggle. Like I do struggle in the acknowledge. Like I didn't know in game that just playing that bot like more conservative style was the right play. So I think that is like a weak point. Yeah, I think I think the one big thing here is that you've completely underestimated how strong Graves Galio was this game. Like you played into their spikes perfectly. And you didn't utilize your one of your big strengths this game, which is your utility and your R. And using that to create man advantage. Mm -hmm. Alright, so again, we really don't want these fights here. I'm even surprised you win this game, to be honest. I I was very surprised. <laughs> like I it it was like you know the, like the what we should have been playing for like just ended up happening because they didn't like the like I think the team like the enemy team just didn't like push their lead like hard mm. enough and I think they just made too many mistakes and Ezreal just ended up one v nining like right. team fights until I was relevant. So ah, uh, and you guys get Baron. Yeah, super, uh, super strange. You get a sneaky Baron. I actually, I, I was going to say all the way back here, what I would have called is give drag. You're pinging dragon. I would give drag, 110%. Same thing. You got two items, Spike on Varus. This guy is fucking, you know, Exodia. And this guy is strong. I mean, I just don't see how you guys are ever going to win a team fight at this stage. Ezreal needs way more time. You need way more time. So, yeah, I mean, they end up kind of over committing bot side. You fuck up their resets. Your team does a really good play and get Baron. So I mean, I mean and then that's what's going to stall the game out, right? So yeah, I think that Baron. I mean, I mean, we ended up actually just getting a bit killed here, but well, the good thing is that even if you die, it doesn't matter because they can't do Baron. So the game is yeah, automatically exactly. getting sorted out, and they and you've got one dragon, which also stalls out the game. So that automatically guarantees that you guys get to three items between the Baron and between the the, the dragon. That's enough. So. What I'm noticing in terms of weaknesses right now, I'm, I'm noticing, I mean, I think number one, you're not using your lull states properly to bounce back mentally and identify, like, you're, you're really quite poor, at, I, I think, identifying game state. Um, and I think that you've also got some weaknesses when it comes to reading comps. Because I think that, okay, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's like, okay, is the problem that you're failing to understand the composition strength over yours? Or is it that you're you're just punched in the face and you're just dazed and you're not able to make a call because you're in full reactive compensation mode? Which was actually another problem, which is the compensation. Right, yeah. I think a lot of this, that the key theme in all of these is getting crystal clear about what you want. Like, I really... 
what knowing what you want is less so it's not even necessarily about like okay i want to just get this this is sometimes what you want is you don't want anything you don't want to fight that is still what you want right yeah, for sure so so mm -hmm. like i think it all starts it all starts back here right you fuck up you die here and you um okay no it actually starts before this it actually starts all the way back here. Your first death. It actually starts here. Right? So, you compensated for the... You, personally, as Italia, you don't want this. We want our Leandris. We don't want... We want we've got 1,400 golden base. We want to get back to base. We want to use this reset window. We want to get back on the map and get some tempo. Right? What do I mm. want? The clearer it is you know what you want, the easier it is to say no. So that's the first mistake. Now, look, I would write off, honestly, the one where they chase you down over the lane. That's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Then, this is where the game gets interesting. You come back. They get bot tower. Again, if we come out of lane, if we, sorry, we come out of base here, what do we want? Bot just died. They've got one of the strongest early to mid game spiking champs in the game like with Galia and Amumu Varus whatever Una is splitting the map what do we want as a Talia this game we want to slow it down right yep just get as much resource as we can yep and really play and? off the 2-3 item yep and uh, yeah and use ult to get man advantage fights yeah that try are and not use fine yet. yeah or, or make a pick with Focal War or something like that right so yeah. we definitely know that moving to Dragon is not utilizing this and it's not utilizing Fog of War. Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely not what we want because we're not immediately stronger. So it can't be that. So then, so we don't know what we want, which says we go to this, which means we're late to this, which means we miss kills and they all die. Same thing here. I mean, look, I don't mind this because, like, look, it, it's a play and I can kind of see how you would think this is a good play. You got it, it, At least it's utilizing one aspect of your kit. So it's not terrible. Personally, I wouldn't have made that decision, but it's not terrible. But same thing from here. What do we What do we want? Do we want a team fight? On no Rift? shot. Yeah. That's on you. Just get to bot. We want to use our R or use Fog of War. We don't want a front to back team fight around a Rift Herald. Into a Galio Graves. That's really fair. And then what happens? You guys lose the fight. So it's a series of plays that just make no sense. You're just saying, you're just a yes man. You're just saying yes yeah, to any right. and every play. Now, I, that's why I want to tie it back to the ace mentality okay so is the problem that you're not able to acknowledge the best play is it that you're not you're not you're not brave enough to communicate it or is that you're failing to embrace with with reality or you're embracing reality too much i think it's all it's it's a combination of all of them but mainly you not really acknowledging the best play and, and failing to communicate it i think it's these two yeah i think i think 100 percent if i was acknowledging like the right play then i'd be way more willing to um like like to like say no to the plays that are bad that's and right. like i'm not doing that and so it's just like that's the play that's available and i'm just like following into it yep um without without direction you know so you know the learning objective something that i'd really want you to just think about moving forward is like we need to incrementally build your knowledge and your 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 uh, your ability to know what the best play is. And how do we do that? Well, when you're in games like this and 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 shit feels weird, like like you, you're like rocking up to a play and you're like or you're at a game state. It's like this doesn't feel right. Like I felt lost or this didn't feel good. These you got to follow your feelings. These are the moments where you got to investigate. Did I did I actually know what I wanted here? Did I have any clue of what I wanted, or did I just was I just checked out and gave up, given up? Yeah, and yeah, and that's why. Like at the beginning of the vod, like I said, like I felt confused. Like as mm. soon as that shift happened, you know, mm. 
like I like I knew it felt wrong. Like I knew mm. like oh just like so, like I wasn't doing Something's something right. Wrong. And mm. yeah, and right. um yeah, okay. So okay. I think that's the yeah, problem. See, I was yeah, cuz I remember la like last week when you told me like to split the vods into two where like the games where you feel off like mm. really figure out like you know like what what really my role is supposed to be like what really I'm supposed to be mm. doing and then have like the the games where I feel like I'm doing the right thing in execution. Yeah, yeah. I think that's definitely the feeling I need to be looking out for when I just feel like yeah, this is yeah, it's just that feeling like things don't go right. Things are going right. So so then the question is okay, is it just that's just the way it's going to be? Sometimes there is no solution. Sometimes it's just a lose lose scenario, right? It's like it's like okay, they trade sides of the map, but we have losing top side, so I can just do nothing. There are those situations. But more often than not, at least you, you can minimize the damage that they're going to do by making a play that's not the one that, you know, they're going for. Like, just give the dragon and just fucking say no and then move over here. And, and so I think what you need to do is you need to really go to these moments where you're losing your, I guess, feeling confused and you're losing your side over, like, the the game. Like, you're losing, um, I guess, your reference point and, and, and failing to really understand how to read the map and so it could and a lot of this is going to be case by case basis maybe it's you don't really know your comp is weaker <clears throat> maybe you didn't know what the solution was in that switch you didn't know what the counterplay was mm -hmm. and, and that's it you just got to bring these situations and clip them and we just go through it but i just want you to have a crack like like if you're genuinely confused then that's it it is what it is Yeah, right. But but 100%. Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to, like, yeah, like, back to my champion's identity. Like, back to, like, what I truly want in the game. And I didn't I didn't acknowledge that in this game. And the and only think, reason, think, by the way, like, the only reason was about you is because no one else was fed. If this was a game where you were, like, 0-3 and you've just got to fend 80 carry, well, then your entire ref reference point is fucking facilitate this guy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. But yeah, I, I mean, even I identified at the beginning of the game, though, like, I was going to be very important. Like, I felt like I could 1v9 this game, and things were going well early for me, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I think I, yeah, I just, yeah, panicked and didn't acknowledge what I really wanted, like, what I what my champion really wanted in that game. Does that all make sense? Yeah, definitely makes sense. Gives me a a good basis to go off of in, in reviews like this, so. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you much. No problem.